Oh man, oh man, ladies and gentlemen, we have a situation on our hands. Lincoln Riley, a.k.a. the Snake, a.k.a. the former Oklahoma coach, and a.k.a. the most hated head coach in all college football, he could possibly be suspended for tampering. As to when I'm speaking and making this video, this is all currently going on right now. There's a lot to it, and I know it's some of you are probably sitting there saying, because at one point in time, I was thinking the same thing. Yo, Matt, how is tampering even a thing when there's NIL? Technically, it's quote-unquote illegal or breaking the rules to tell a player hey if you come here we'll get you six or seven figures in nil money the name image of likeness money isn't supposed to be coming directly from the head coach or the university that's supposed to be money you earn through sponsorships or brand deals let me dumb it down even more if there's a wide receiver at oregon and i'm oklahoma's head coach i can't go to him and say hey if you leave Oregon and come to Oklahoma, we'll give you a million dollars. I hope that makes sense. I can't dumb it down anymore. We got a lot to go over and a lot to talk about in this video. But first, real quick, I got to say this. Haven't done this game in about two to three weeks on the channel, but if you're new or you've been watching and simply not subscribed, let's see how many new subscribers we can gain from this video. We're on the road to 200K, so if you want to help us out and you enjoy the content, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe and leave a like. It really helps us out. And if you don't want to, that's cool too. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it. Good old Lincoln Riley. I would say he's the most fascinating point in college football, at least at this given moment. Nick Saban's like the OG master swan, and then you have Dabo Sweeney. Not too sure what to really make out of him. But then you got Lincoln Riley as well. I see Dabo as a little childish and a little stubborn because he doesn't want to change his way of football and that's going to hurt him. He's also not a big fan of the NIL and the transfer portal and he hates it. So that's why I think he's a little childish. Whereas for Nick Saban, and I don't want to get into this rant, but he doesn't necessarily like it, but he doesn't complain about it as much. And then somewhere in between the Sweeney's of the world and the Nick Saban's, you got the Kirby Smart who's on the rise. If I had to place a bet on who I thought had the best chance of coming close to being on that category of Nick Saban, I would say Kirby Smart. Maybe that's due to him being around him for a long time, but you gotta admit it, Kirby Smart, it does do some dumb stuff here and there, but he's a great coach. I don't think it's a if, it's more of a when Kirby Smart in Georgia wins another championship, he'll start to get that recognition of being elite. He's not elite yet because he's only got one, but wait till he gets two. So right now I got Saban at one, Kirby Smart at two, Davo Sweeney at three, and somewhere below that, not necessarily at four, five, or six, you got Lincoln Riley. To be quite honest, I think he's barely in the top 10. He had good years at Oklahoma, some of them being great. The only downside to it is that every time they got into the playoff, they folded like an omelet. We're now in a day and age where if you don't win a national championship, it's considered a bust. The argument I've seen throughout his Oklahoma career, especially later on, is that yeah, he was a good coach, but Oklahoma, it's more of a prestigious program. I see a lot of fans saying that it's not like he built them up from nothing like Alabama did with Nick Saban when he came in. Whenever Lincoln Riley got that Oklahoma job, they were already in good shape. I don't like how some people try to discredit him and say they only were successful because of the programs, what's the word I'm looking for, because of their history, but you get what I'm trying to say. Even if you don't like him, I think we all gotta somewhat respect him for what he did. It's not like they took a back seat when he got there. He continued to keep his foot on the gas. It did help that they had Heisman quarterbacks left and right, but at the end of the day, he's the one coaching them. I don't care if you know everything about football. I don't care if you're the best coach of all time. The first part of coaching is recruiting. Say what you want about Lincoln Riley, but that man can recruit, especially at the quarterback and offensive positions. I don't think there's any argument with that. Whenever he decided to leave Oklahoma and go to USC, he took the star quarterback with him. Not only did he take the star quarterback, he also took a star wide receiver. Oh snap, now that I think about it, I wasn't even going to bring this up, but it just came back into my mind. Remember when all this was going on, there was leaked information that assistant coaches for Oklahoma, when they were coaching for Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley, they were recruiting players not to go to Oklahoma, but to go to USC. I forgot all about that, but that was a serious allegation that was going on at the time but of course nothing was proven if they could have proved that that would have been interesting but basically if you don't know what i said let me dumb it down even more there was this whole dilemma going on that many people believe in i personally believed that lincoln riley hit quick coaching halfway through the season because he knew he was going to take the usc job to go along with that when he was recruiting while he was still the head coach at oklahoma he wasn't recruiting those kids to go to Oklahoma. 
He was telling them, hey, I'm about to take this USC job. You should go there. He wasn't just doing that on the recruiting trail. He was doing that to his current Oklahoma players. And I do believe that. Was it ever proven? No. But why else when Lincoln Riley leaves to go to USC, four or five of his players follow him? It wasn't like they even had to think about it. It was literally the next day or two. Seems a little fishy, if you had to ask me. Never mind, it's not fishy, it's obvious. Everybody knows what was going on. It's not the biggest deal in the world that a couple Oklahoma players decided to go with their head coach, but it's still breaking the rules. It's definitely some shady stuff, and it rubbed a lot of Oklahoma people the wrong way. For those of you that don't know, Oklahoma's fan base, and I love when college football is around because I talk about them so much because I love their fan base because they're so interactive. You want to talk about a fan base that is going to ride and die for their players? That's Oklahoma fans. One thing I've noticed about these Oklahoma fans ever since I've started covering college football is they're really loyal. And when I say really, I mean they're really, really, really loyal. That can be a good, but it can also be a bad thing. Here's why. Whenever somebody is loyal, not just in football, in a relationship or anything, if you're with them, it's going to be the best thing ever because they're going to make your life sweet. They're not going to cheat on you. They're going to praise you every single moment they got. However, and I think you know where I'm going with this, if you leave them in a rough way like Lincoln Riley did, it's going to be not so good. Not only will you lose their respect, they will blatantly hate you. Rightfully so. Anybody that leaves a program out to dry like the way he did, you have a right to hate them. I've said this multiple times on the channel. I would have done the exact same thing Riley did. I'm sorry, Oklahoma fans. One, I'd rather live in a better place in USC. And two, I'd rather make more money as a head coach. It's much deeper than a coach just leaving a school. You have to understand he has a wife and kids and a wife doesn't really want to live in Oklahoma. And Riley has always rubbed me as more of this spotlight type of head coach. He never really, I'm not going to say he didn't fit in with Oklahoma, but he's more of a celebrity figure. He seems more that outgoing guy that would fit in with USC. And well, 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 what do you know? There's a new situation that's going on with Mr. Lincoln Riley and a player he's trying to recruit in. This isn't just any said player, and this is why it's such a big deal. It's the Bolitnikov winner, Jordan Addison from Pittsburgh. If you win the Bolitnikov, you are technically the best wide receiver in America. It's not even up for debate. It's facts. Weirdly enough, this wide receiver, once again, his name's Jordan Addison, he announced that he's considering transferring from Pittsburgh. And when he announces that, it is leaked and rumored that the top school on his list is USC. For those of you that don't know just how good this young man is, I'm not going to hype him up too much. I'm just going to read off his stats, and I think they do all the talking it needs to. Last year, he had 100 receptions for 1,593 yards and 17 touchdowns in one year. In that year last year, he was only a sophomore. So just going off of those stats, going into next year as a junior, I don't think it's crazy for me to say he could have 2,000 yards if he plays for a great quarterback like Caleb Williams. Last year, he had Kenny Pickett, and Kenny Pickett was good in college, so that's why he had a good season. I get it 100%. It's the same thing with Jermaine Burton at Georgia. Would you rather play for Stetson Bennett or Bryce Young? As a wide receiver, it matters a ton about who your quarterback is. He can make or break you. A quarterback, not so really. I mean, yeah, you can have a bad offensive line, but you still control when you touch the ball. For a wide receiver, it's almost out of your hands. If you don't have a good quarterback, that can affect your entire season dramatically. So I understand wanting to go to USC from strictly a football standpoint. But the argument going on right now is that it's not from a football standpoint, it's from an NIL money standpoint. It's being rumored that Lincoln Riley told him they could get him up to six to seven figures, which is a million dollars in NIL deals. That also raises this question. Who in the heck is going to give him a million dollars? Look, don't get me wrong, I respect the kid and I have heard of him before, but most casual fans have never heard of him. I'd say maybe 20, 15% of the people watching this video have even heard of him or watched a game. That matters a ton when it comes to NIL. He's not a Caleb Williams. He's not a Bryce Young, Bo Nix, a quarterback or a well-known running back or star player. And when you don't have all that media hype and attention, you're not supposed to get all these big brand deals. It wouldn't make sense for the companies. Theoretically speaking, that's the argument that a lot of people are trying to say. Who in their right mind is giving him this money? Many are saying the USC boosters and Lincoln Riley, they're going to pay him. If you're wondering how that's going to work, they're going to probably try to do some sleeky under the table thing where they give them the money and they say, oh, well, Beats, they actually gave him the money. We didn't. Here's what a Clemson fan said. This got over 2,000 likes. Lincoln Riley continues to show he's the most sleazy guy in all college football. I do want to address that. 
I see where you're coming from 100%, but Lincoln Riley, he's just trying to do his job. What Lincoln Riley is doing is no different from all these billionaire companies like Amazon, Nike, you name it, avoiding taxes. They're bending the rules. Just like all these companies that don't pay taxes, that's what Lincoln Riley's doing in this situation. Is he breaking the rules? It's hard to prove it, but it's definitely knowable that he's bending them. And that's the hardest part about it because you can't convict him on it. My thing is the NCAA should have known this. If you were gonna put in this NIL and transfer portal bull crap, you knew stuff like this was going to happen or eventually it would happen down the road. I just think it's happening all too fast and nobody was ready for it. I mean, look at Nick Saban in Alabama. They landed six four and five star recruits in the transfer portal just in the past couple of months. Now they did it in a more respectable way, so that is a difference. Pittsburgh's head coach was so mad about this, he called Lincoln Riley himself and told him how mad he was, and the Pittsburgh official says there's tampering going on. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Now that word tampering, that is some serious allegations. When I saw that word being thrown around, that's when I really got intrigued by all this, because if it can be proven, not just you thinking it on the couch or me thinking it in my bedroom, but if they can legitimately prove he is tampering, Lincoln Riley could get suspended for one to two years. We really don't know because we've never had to deal with this in college football. There's not really a standard, like we've never seen a coach get suspended for tampering. I think it'd be similar to the Calvin Ridley situation in the NFL. I think if it was proven he tampered and got this receiver from Pittsburgh, the NCAA would try to make a, what's the word I'm looking for? they try to make an example out of him. They've already been talking about this and it was actually talked about on ESPN by David Pollock and he was pissed off about it too. It has been confirmed though, if Lincoln Riley's proved of all this stuff he's quote unquote said doing, he will be ineligible or suspended. I like this tweet, I wanna read it out to you guys. This person said regarding the wide receiver, so basically people want this kid to stay in a situation where he is most likely going to play with a subpar quarterback, O-line, and defense out of some moral compass they have. Dismissing the fact he will be playing to try to raise his draft stock, do we not care about the player? That's my argument, you know how I feel. If you're a wide receiver, I would go play for the best quarterback I can. Who knows what's going to happen? My question is, so if Lincoln Riley's proved that he's tampering with getting this wide receiver, does that also mean the wide receiver, he's suspended? I don't know, and that's why all this transfer portal and NIL bullcrap is so intriguing. We don't know the repercussions, and you can almost guarantee it, if anyone's going to try to push its limits, it's going to be Riley. Although I would have left to go to USC like he did, I don't agree in the way he did it. It was childish, it was immature, and I think he owed Oklahoma more. It was the way he left Oklahoma, and that's why he's got a bad image. When you don't even say bye to your players and you just up and leave, take a jet to USC a couple of days after the season, it's not a good look. I didn't like it, I agree with the decision, but I don't agree with how he handled it. And now we got this going on, man. College football going into next year is going to be awesome. I can't wait. I'm very curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. But with all that being said, it's going to wrap up this video. We got all these.